The Lord be with you, my friends in Christ. Welcome into this new week of devotion time. First of all, I want to thank you again for your prayers for Sharon. Her recovery continues, progress continues to be made very well. And we thank God for that. We give praise to God for that. We certainly thank him for your love and all of the encouragement and, and blessings that you have sent our way and prayers that you've sent God's way. Glory to God. All glory to God. To God alone be all the glory, a big part of our life, and finally even every part of our life, is doing just that. It's not just in the worship time, although it certainly is there, that we are giving glory to God. In fact, Peter says we are God's own people that we may declare the praises of him who has brought us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. That's 1 Peter chapter 2, talking about us as saints of God, his church. But today I invite you to listen to some of writing, the writing of Paul. And in fact, his seminal work, the letter to the Romans. I'm going to spend some time in the book of Romans. And today I invite you to listen to Romans 11, verses 33 to 36. What I like about this so often, the scripture writers, it seems they're writing along and they just have to stop in the midst of what is going on, what they're writing about, what the Lord is inspiring and, and leading them to see and to believe and to teach and convey. Is, it just take, they just got to pause for a moment and give glory to God. So that's what we're doing. That's what we do with our lives as well. Be encouraged to do that on the basis of Romans 11. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is God's word and such a profound word of God that it is because we are reminded again of just how, how high and holy and almighty and all wise and uh, oh, all powerful our God is. He is beyond us, beyond our reach, beyond our full understanding, beyond us period. And yet, his interaction with us is very significant, very powerful, very personal. He comes to you and to me in Jesus and his love, and he washes us clean. He gives us the gift of eternal life. We can't ever repay him for that. It's it's just beyond our ability to do so. I, I guess here's an illustration, and I know it's a, a borders on the absurd. But let's say you have something that is an absolute priceless treasure to you, to your family, been in your family for generations. You have uh, had it assessed, and monetarily it is almost beyond assessment and price, emotionally, family connections wise, it is beyond words, and you choose to give it to me. I don't know why, but out of love and out of just thanksgiving, and so you present this priceless gift to me, and I go, oh wow, what an amazing thing here. Let me give you five bucks for it, okay? There, okay, now we're even. No. We can never repay. Paul talks about the immensity of God, and what is his response? It is praise, giving glory to God. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. And speaking of that, from the Trinity section of our hymnal, here's a song giving glory to God. 506. Glory be to God the Father, glory be to God the Son, glory be to God the Spirit, great Jehovah, three in one. Glory, glory, while eternal ages run. Glory be to him who loved us, washed us 
from each spot and stain. Glory be to him who bought us, made us kings with him to reign. Glory, glory to the Lamb that once was slain. Glory, blessing, praise eternal, thus the choir of angels sing. Honor, riches, power, dominion, thus its praise creation brings. Glory, glory, glory to the King of kings. Back in the 1600s, when the King James Bible was written, rather than the word Yahweh for the Hebrew word for Lord, they used Jehovah. But more modern translations have a better translation and translate that Yahweh. But still, this hymn was written in the 1800s, so no surprise that we hear the word Jehovah every once in a while in our hymns. We use that word for God our Lord. I invite you to pray. We do give you glory, Lord Jesus, for your grace, for your love, and for the gift of our salvation. Bless us to glorify you always. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening. God be with you till we meet again.